My name is Alice and I was born in the Czech Republic in the town of Krnov in the year of 1963. I went to the school and then I went to pedagogic school until I was about 16 years old when my parents decided to leave the country and take us for a ride and see new kinds of worlds and we ended up in Canada, in Calgary, where I have lived until about two years ago. My name is Lubos Pešta and I uh, am Czech-Canadian. Uh, we immigrated to Canada in 1969, uh, have lived in Canada for over 50 years, and um, am a practicing lawyer. My area of specialty is real estate, and I have practiced as a lawyer for over 40 years in Calgary. Emigration really is not an easy step and I'm so grateful to my parents that they had the courage to do that. Um, in the beginning I've missed all of my friends. I was 16. Uh, I didn't know that we were not coming back and I spent a lot of nights crying and feeling extremely lonely. After a year in Austria, we finally were landing in Calgary and a new life, new language, new, 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 everything was new. And it was very exciting actually. So immigration was probably harder for my parents, but for myself not as much because I could go uh, instantly back to school and I uh, went to school and to university and um, continued living very happily actually back in Calgary. I met Alice uh, 1986, fall of 1986. Interestingly through my law practice Alice needed uh, legal services and it wasn't in my area of practice, but I remember her coming into the office. She was uh, using a different lawyer to assist her. And uh, eventually we started to talk and uh, that's how we met initially. With Lou, I met because I was looking for a lawyer to help me going through the divorce papers. However, Lou really is not a divorce lawyer and we only met for a short while because he sent me to another lawyer. But the universe had it for us differently. And uh, when I was in a car accident driving with my brother, it, uh, the universe decided that I need to go see a lawyer and he did actually do the work for my injuries and invited me to go swimming with him and it started a beautiful slow relationship because we were both Czech and it was an incredible honor to actually be together and speak together and from that moment we knew that something was something was right something was right so and we've been together for 35 years now shortly after i met alice for the first time uh, i invited her to come over uh, we had a swimming pool in our condo and she came over for a swim and uh, things moved moved very very quickly we were both previously married uh, Alice and I were both married to uh, Canadians and uh, there was something that clicked when uh, Alice and I met and started to talk and we realized that uh, uh, the commonality of, of Czech background and Czech language, we really valued that and uh, that was something that we were missing in our prior marriages and uh, very quickly uh, we decided that uh, Alice was going to move, to move in with me. We were both uh, separated at the time. And uh, within a matter of months, Alice moved into my condo and we have lived together ever since. I would like to share a little story that is 
a little bit funny, but it's a lot of uh, beauty in that story. When Lou and I actually met first time, it might have been in the beginning of the year, and the car accident was in September. And we knew that the chemistry was there within a few meetings. And we decided that we're going to move together after Christmas. And Lou's older brother said, why are you waiting? If it works, just go for it. And Lou is a man of action. So it was, I think, September, October, when I moved in together with Dominic to his condo. It wasn't long, probably within six weeks or eight weeks that we were together. I had a really bad kidney infection and Lou brought me to the hospital with very high fevers and he was crying and trying to help me not to have that pain. He would sit by my bed and write poetry to me. He would sit by my bed and read me children's story. And Lou has been sitting by my bed and bringing me to hospital for the last 35 years. Even if I was in the hospital for four months, it was the coffee at six o'clock in the morning was there. And at four o'clock after work, he would come watch baseball, but he would sit there until closing time. And for me, that is true love that is a commitment and that is integrity and I love my husband for that. Right when I met Alice I knew that he, she had some underlying health issues. Uh, they weren't as pronounced at the time but we both understood uh, that her health challenges were going to uh, at some point in time become more prominent and that was one of the reasons why we lived life as much uh, to the fullest as, as we could. Um, at, the, at the beginning and, and whenever we could. Uh, Alice suffered from, actually now that I think about it, she suffered from various uh, health challenges all along. She had a lot of migraines uh, in her 20s and 30s, debilitating migraine, migraines where she would end up in the hospital. And uh, we had frequent visits to the hospital for medication and treatment over migraines, which were very, very severe. Um, but I don't really think about that and we didn't really ever concern ourselves with that. It was just a reality that we knew we had to deal with. Uh, when it came up, it, it came up, it was addressed. When Alice was healthy, we enjoyed life as, as best as we could. And we never let her health challenges ever limit us uh, in whatever we ended up doing. Uh, even when eventually she ended up on dialysis, uh, we traveled while she was on dialysis um, and um, basically did not let that limit our living life to the fullest, always. My children are the motor why I keep on going on and trying to do the best I can in every moment. Uh, I've mentioned before, Dominic is now 34 and he's a successful interpreter as well as a very good welder uh, his partner Lisa and Dominic live in a beautiful place and are truly happy and it's always such a pleasure to see them uh, it has not been easy for Dominic growing up because with my illness he was very much attached and uh, my pain was uh, double the pain for him. Our daughter Nicole is 31 years old and uh, she's the sunshine of our life and uh, I must say Nicole is my best friend. We've had so many mother-daughter trips and laughters and growing up together that I wish every mother could have a relationship like that with a daughter just like Nicole is. I'm so proud of her because she's now a psychologist and helps people who are seeking help with mental health. And 
lots of times we discuss the pain and suffering for people and how the best way to help them. So how did we deal with Alice's health challenges uh, when we were young? Well, obviously we had children as well. So there was a challenge of uh, the children having to be looked after. Um, and we were fortunate that we did have family that we could rely on in those instances um, where Alice's parents were able to take the children. Um, the children were happy to go uh, to their grandparents and, and visit them for uh, the time that Alice needed recovery in the hospitals. Um, fortunately, it was usually a fairly short time. As, um, as bad as Alice's visits to the hospital were and how debilitating her migraines, she always rebounded very quickly. And it was a matter of a short time period and she was back on her feet. Um, that's one thing that Alice is amazing at. She has amazing internal strength and uh, no matter what challenge happens to present itself, Alice always, as soon as she's able, rebounds uh, and, and gets back to living life to the fullest almost immediately. So for us, it became a regular routine. We didn't look at it as anything extraordinary. That was part of our lives. That, that's something we had to contend with. And. Uh, Alice always pushed the envelope. I mean, I remember many Christmas parties where Alice would have guests over and Alice would hold out right up until she served dinner and then she would collapse and we would end up going to the hospital uh, right afterwards. And uh, she always had the strength to make sure that whatever she felt she needed to get done was done uh, and, and then she would let go and then we would end up in the hospital from there. Living with chronic disease from a young age, uh, in my case it was since I was 11 years old when I didn't get treated for a strep throat and the uh, bacteria actually, or the virus, uh, attacked uh, the kidney and uh, the illness is called glomeronephritis IgA. Kidney disease, it's a disease, uh, it's called the silent, silent killer. So it, there is really no pain. Uh, I have been uh, watching myself, but my mother was uh, extremely careful and actually uh, she was the one who was living through my illness, whether it was uh, always worried how didn't you know didn't want me to go there and there always worried something will happen to me and then when I had the surgeries and mm, so many uh, so many infections uh, they really really could not accept uh, all the pain and suffering that I was going through uh, my brother Michael who is five years younger has told me that he really cannot handle coming to the hospital and seeing all that uh, a body can endure. And uh, in a way, he was very proud of me, how strong I am. But uh, when it came uh, to some really deep pain or so, he was very open and I'm so proud that he had that courage to say, Alice, I just can't deal with this. This is too much for me. And I can't, you know, I love you, but I, I please don't share all of the details with me. So chronic disease, it's uh, uh, the whole society pain. And we are kind of trying to shuffle it, you know, under the carpet, yet it is all there. And in today's world, when so many people are stressed and they have allergies and all kinds of different illness, I believe that it's time to really look at ourselves and decide to, you know, live a little different lifestyle. 
Alice's first transplant, um, she received at around age 25, 26, after a year and a half on dialysis. Um, it was a, a very exciting opportunity for her. Of course, it was a cadaver transplant from a young lady uh, who uh, suffered a brain aneurysm and, and she passed away quite young. So it was a tragedy from that uh, lady's family, but it was a godsend to us. The match of that kidney was amazingly good. In fact, the doctor said uh, that it was so good that it was better from twins. That, that's how good the match was of the kidney. And it actually worked very well for Alice for many years. Alice ended up working in my office with me for a number of years. Uh, we were able to enjoy life even more than ever before. Uh, unfortunately, about 20 years later, 25 years later, um, Alice had some other medical challenges that were not properly diagnosed and eventually lost the kidney, which forced her to go back on dialysis, initially hemodialysis and then, um, then uh, peritoneal dialysis. And we needed to find another kidney for Alice because being on dialysis is not an ideal lifestyle. My second kidney transplant came five years ago and I did not really want it to have my family involved because I didn't feel I deserve it. I didn't want to have either my husband or my daughter donate their organs. And one day when we were in Sedona, my daughter looked so ill, I thought, okay, I better get her tested and know what is going on. Well, she got tested, but her kidneys are so small, so she couldn't donate. And I never thought that it was going to be the next one, which was Lou, to go and get tested. And again, Lou proved to be the man. Not only did he get tested that he can donate, but he also lost 30 pounds and he walked 500 miles and he walked 500 miles more. And even though he was promised to have a small operation, the operation was quite uh, big and there were complications but uh, I have his kidney now and uh, Julie is working she's working well but we know that she's at the last stage so we've got five stages of the kidney first stage is the healthy one and five is the ending stage so Julie is now in the fifth stage and uh, I can see that there are some How could I say it? But I can see that the body is starting to slow down and we'll see where it will take us. Some people might say, what a selfless act it is. And I would respond that it was actually a selfish act on my part, because obviously if Alice was healthy, that was better for me as well. Um, so um, if Alice was healthy, we would be able to enjoy our life together to the fullest again um, and not be constrained uh, by um, the need for Alice to dialyze from time to time. So really, again, um, it's something that I think any husband would do for their spouse if, if they needed a kidney. And, and I think any wife would do for their husband if their husband uh, needed a kidney as well. So it's not extraordinary. I mean, this happens all the time. Uh, there are many people that we have subsequently met uh, that have done the same thing for their uh, loved ones in life. After the transplant, when Lou gave me his kidney, I was a mental mess. I was psychologically so messed up because there were so many mistakes and I wasn't feeling well, I wasn't eating properly. We moved and there were so many changes in our life. Uh, however, when I came to see the doctor and I asked him, 
please can you see what is going on because i am just not doing well mentally and psychologically and the doctor sent me to a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist uh, had a meeting with me for about 30 minutes and i told him quickly my whole life story and he gave me a prescription and sent me home the prescription was for a very uh, strong medication that would affect my brain and thinking and there was something that just made it like hey and i went to see my gp doctor uh, general practitioner doctor who looked at it and he was amazed uh, the amount of medication that or the strength of the medicine and didn't agree that I should take that and sent me to another psychiatrist that thought that this is not to take this and uh, gave me instead uh, marijuana uh, in a liquid form uh, I would have few drops in the morning for breakfast just to slow down the anxieties and whatever but uh, when I was asking uh, my brother my husband my sister-in-law my daughter uh, if I should take this medication and how, how what should I do you know when you when we are lost in life we always go out to ask people help me help me help me but my daughter said the choice is always yours and that was something that just clicked because I was sitting there so lost and I was saying well if I have to make a choice who is this I that is making the choice because I was feeling I was being pulled left right and everywhere and at that time I started meditating and meditation is a very good start to go and slow down your thinking process. What we are doing mostly in our lives, we believe our thoughts and we are so self-sabotaging our growth and to truly know who we are. And I cannot explain it to you, but suddenly there was this pull that was pulling me into this world that was very unknown to me and but i was hungry it it was like if you have not drunk for a week and suddenly you came to a pool of water and all you wanted to do is dive deep in and just have all the water come to you whether through drinking through your skin so all i was doing was learning all about the spirituality and I came to non-duality and uh, it's still a part of my life uh, slowing down I started also writing a journal and from the journal somehow Alice Land started to be created and because it is uh, built on the three C's the first thing is to recognize the chance when we are in the darkest moment when the darkest darkest when we think we cannot go on anymore that is when the light comes and the chance to see it and accept it and really embrace it will show us how to make a choice from a different perspective from a different way of thinking from a different I would say from knowing that you don't even have to make a choice that you know what your next step is and coming through that the change will start coming and yes it is not an easy easy trip it's a very difficult and one needs to be dedicated so Alice's uh, transformation and creation of Alice land really came to be about five years ago and Alice was always an extraordinarily strong person in terms of her uh, drive. I think a lot of it comes from the fact that she's by nature a stubborn person. She would refuse to allow any health challenge 
get her down. And uh, actually, any, anybody who knows Alice and has known Alice over the years and has seen what she was able, able to overcome physically, uh, the number of challenges she was able to overcome is and, and should be awed by it because not everybody has the internal strength um, to overcome so many challenges. I mean, it's unbelievable how many challenges Alice has had to overcome in her lifetime. As I was writing uh, my journal and it was shaping a book or a story that I wanted to share with the world, I didn't know how to name it. And we were at that time in Maui, and I was walking in those beautiful beaches. I was walking on a beautiful, wonderful golf course. And every night or every evening I sat there and I was watching the sunset. Often I would always ask, how should I name this book? How should I name this story? And at first, uh, I wanted to call it Alice in La La Land because I felt that we are in this world that sometimes seems so crazy. But there was a musical that just came out in the name of Alice in La La Land. Alice in Wonderland is a book that many of us adults read as children and maybe still read the book to our children or even watch the movie that has been played. And there I was sitting and suddenly it came, it came Alice Land. At first I just thought, oh, I'm not so sure, I'm not so sure. But the more I would use the word, the more I would work with the book, how I was uh, trying to put every step of my growth every pain that I had to go through, every fear I had to face. I wanted to share that with everyone who was willing to read the book and trying to, you know, find a healthier way to deal with chronic disease. My book is really just a pocketbook to help not only people with chronic disease of uh, um, organs or uh, physical, but also sometimes mental, you know, when we get into depressions or so. So they are really baby steps, how we can turn just a little bit and see and perceive uh, the situation or our life or ourselves from a different angle. And also, it is a book to get to know who we truly are. And to know who we truly are, we need to know who we are not. And yes, there were many cries, and there were many moments when I just wanted to give up and I didn't want to do it anymore. But suddenly there was that break, and this light, and that life open, and that energy was just carrying me and supporting me because I proved that I'm committed, that I, that's what I wanted to do. And it is, Alice Lan is right now my happiness and my joy and I love to teach it and talk it and share it with anyone who is going to listen. Because truly, when you know who you are, you know what you want. And when you know what you want, you can have what, what it is that you chose. I have come uh, to realize that Alice has a real gift um, in how she connects with people. And she's able to, to help people. Uh, just um, a short story. Uh, in my office building, there is an East Indian lady that works on the weekends at the security desk. And one day I was leaving late from, the, from work and walking by her desk, signing out, and she asked me how Alice was. And I never actually realized that she had met Alice. And uh, I had asked her about that. She says, yes, that 
once several months ago or prior to that or even a year prior to that Alice came for a visit and she chatted with the lady a brief time and she had made a real impression on her and she was really impressed with uh, the philosophy uh, that Alice had and um, so was asking to see how Alice was doing and um, I told her at the time that Alice had published a book and she was excited to be able to get a copy of the book and um, I could see that Alice had made a difference in, in her life and that happens all the time. I will um, see Alice in person, strike up a conversation with somebody on the bus or just on the street and immediately she is able to connect with them and, and they're able to respond and connect with Alice and she is genuinely able to help them uh, cope with issues that they may be facing at the time. Uh, as I'm learning to truly open and talk to people in front of camera and in um, uh, groups, what I believe is that step by step I'm going to sh share with people how to see the light, how to live much happier life and how to grow consciously. Because if we allow ourselves to truly be who we are, we will see the light and the love will just support us from every step of our being. So I see Alice Lan to become a tool, not only to patients, but also to the doctors and nurses, as we are going to see that we need to look at ourselves and the whole world as one whole thing and not fragment us or just the illness to just one piece because everything is in, interlined together so it's super important to understand that and grow on that foundation as that we are one being beautiful living. So what does Alice mean to me? Well, uh, Alice is everything. Uh, she is, yes, she is the mother of our children. She is my wife. Um, but more than that, she's my inspiration. Um, as I've mentioned, uh, you know, already, I don't know any person that has uh, the kind of internal drive and strength um, that Alice has. She has an amazing innate internal drive and, and strength to like the phoenix, you know, the legendary phoenix that burns and, and then springs back, you know, stronger and better than ever before. That's exactly how Alice is, except reborn numerous times, you know, always comes crashing down to the earth uh, for reasons beyond her control, uh, only to come out of that situation stronger and better than ever before. She, she is an incredible person. She does have a gift. It's, it's amazing how connected we are. Um, People might find this funny, but we've had many instances where half the way around the globe, we will pick up our phones within a fraction of a second of each other. And uh, we will uh, both be dialing the number at the same time, where we don't have a preset time to call. It just happens. Um, I'll be thinking of her and she'll be thinking of me. Uh, somehow, we're connected um, and that's Alice. Alice is connected. Uh, I am just on the receiving end of it because she's the one who has transformed and evolved to a realm which um, I, can, I can't even understand uh, the realm that she operates in. But uh, she's an amazing individual and uh, she will continue to inspire the world for many years to come.
I have a dream and it's a big dream. What I always wanted from the when I understood the depth and the importance of Alice Lam and how it can save lives. My dream is to have a room in every school, room in every hospital in the name of Alice Lam. And there it would be a room where people can go to and not be afraid to be who they truly are, to be listened to without judgment, to be taken exactly as they are. And if they don't know who they are, we can help them to see how beautiful they truly are and how powerful they are and to learn that they have the power and the strength to heal themselves. Because if I can do it, anybody can do it. And if we can start healing in the school, the children who sometimes have trauma at home or bullying, this is what my dream is. That one day there will be Alice Land on every corner just like we have McDonald's now.